the right YouTube. It is Mr. Mean coming at you this very gloomy Monday morning from Duluth, Minnesota. It's uh, it's raining. We actually had some snow. Uh, it's not sticking. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's another video RPG du jour. Uh, it's a little dark in here. I just don't feel like having the lights on, but you guys can see me. Everything is good. Everything is beautiful. Everything is wonderful. I hope you are all hale and hearty, and I had a wonderful weekend. Uh, how about that Game of Thrones? Oh, went too fast as far as my opinion goes, but we won't talk about any spoilers in case people haven't seen it yet. Let's get some housekeeping out of the way. As always, like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. Um, uh, you guys have been great. I think we're almost up to 500 subscribers. That's awesome. So thank you. I uh, would love to hit that thousand mark here real soon. That would be super cool. Um, I hope uh, everybody's enjoying the content. If there's something you want to see me review or talk about, post a note in the comments below. Hit me up on MeWe. Hit me up on Discord. I'll put links down in the doobly-doo. Uh, I'm also going to give a huge shout-out to all my fellow Nerds International brothers and sisters out there. Love you guys. Uh, without Nerds International, I don't think my channel would be half as popular as it is. Uh, those guys are do a great job of of uh, promoting stuff, and I just want to give a big shout out to those guys and say thank you for all the help and uh, everything. Jamie and Eric and uh, Stefan Dragonspawn, uh, everybody, uh, Daryl Cartier, uh, Murder Hobo. Uh, love you guys. Uh, you guys' shows are all awesome. I try to listen to them whenever I can. If you're a Palladium, uh, well, if you're a Savage Worlds Riffs fan, do yourself a favor and check out Murder Hobo's Savage Riffs podcast. Awesome, awesome, awesome information, guys. There will be a link down in the doobly-doo to the Murder Hobo show. Go check it out. Um, you'll enjoy it. It's, uh, it's If you're thinking about getting into Savage Riffs, check it out. It's well worth your time. Put it on, download it to your phone or your podcast player of choice and uh or your car or whatever i don't know these newfangled technology and uh listen to it man it's totally worth it um donations uh i get uh, a decent amount of donations donations so thank you guys more is always welcomed uh i'm currently out of work and so anything you can do to help support the channel is awesome i'm on zelly pay i understand my european friends are uh, are out uh, out of luck uh i'm really sorry i don't know of a way around it i've been looking to see and there's just patreon's really i think the only choice if there's other options out there i'm not aware of them um but you know hey feel free to you know i don't know uh i don't, I don't know what to tell you uh like and subscribe get your friends to subscribe since you can't send me money i appreciate it i the thought counts i for what it's worth uh thank you guys uh and gals and um guys i just the love is awesome thank you so much for helping support the channel like i said we're almost to 500 subscribers which is awesome uh this little channel started two years ago and it's literally pretty much just me doing this right here talking to the screen and uh interacting with you guys when you do post um, I try to go live, um, various software, YouTube is changing stuff and I just, I don't have it down and I, it, you'd be surprised how busy you are when you're unemployed. It's, it's, it's insane. Um, you know, and my wife is in therapy. I have to drive her, you know, back and forth a couple times a week, uh, which allows, gives me time. She's in therapy three hours uh, a week or three hours a day, three times a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So it gives me the time to do this right now while I'm unemployed. When I go back to work, the videos will be in the evening and they will be and or on the weekends. So like and subscribe. Hit me up on Zelly Pay, uh, www.zellypay, Z-E-L-L-E, pay.com. All you need is my email, J-P-O-L-A-C-K at gmail.com. Links down in the doobly-doo, and you can send a donation to the channel. It is greatly appreciated. It keeps food on the table. It helps feed my little guy. Uh, it helps keep me buying games uh, when I can afford it. Um, I'm going to be at Austacon this weekend. So if you're going to be in northern Minnesota, in Austin, Minnesota, home of the famous Spam Museum. Yes, Mr. Mean will be at the Spam Museum. You bet your bottom dollar I will be. Um, it, it's awesome. Uh, I grew up on Spam. Uh, anybody probably 
of my generation knows spam quite well. Um, so I'll be there. I'll be running uh, Modern Age, uh, and I'll be running Simba Room uh, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Simba Room, I believe, is on Saturday. Modern Age is on Sunday. Uh, it, it's a great little con. The proceeds, uh, the, the auction and everything that they have goes to autism. Last year, they raised over $3,500. Michael from the convention reached out to me and uh, and gave me a big thank you and kind of clarified some stuff. I did copy his email in the uh, Osticon video. Go back in the archive. It's like two, three videos back. Um, and it talks about it. And so I wanted to reiterate that I gave everybody the right information. Um, if you buy a hat or you buy tickets, that just helps support the con. It's a $15 ticket. Um, you know, uh, buy a hat. You know, you get a cool hat or t-shirt. You know, your gamers love their t-shirts. Um, and you'll be help supporting a great small little con. Hopefully, we can make it bigger. And if you do, tell them Mr. Mean sent you. I'm gonna I'm gonna probably sit down and chat with Mr. Michael over the weekend. Hopefully, uh, to get his insight on behind the scenes of conventions because that's something I haven't done. So I'm hoping to be able to record that audio and uh, go from there. I'm gonna bring my Mac with me and uh, we'll record it with my snowball and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, uh, I can get I can get a chance to do that and hopefully he'll uh, he'll have the time to sit down with me. So anyway, we've got all that out of the way. Like and subscribe, pass the information on, tell your friends, support Mr. Mean at zellypay.com. Uh, hit me up on MeWe, hit me up on Discord. I always love to chat. Uh, today's video du jour, I already covered Simba Room. Uh, I've done two or three videos on Simba Room. It is one of my favorite RPGs. It's, dare I say, up there with the dark eye. Um, but today's video du jour... Modern Age. Uh, Green Ronin. This came out uh, later last year. I got to put my spectacles on. Can't read the dates. I'm blind. Um, let's see. What was the publishing date on this? I want to say it was 2016. 2018. Oh, I'm my bad. Last year. Um, I, you know what? I think you could buy the PDF in 2017. Uh, or at the end of it or whatever. Um, so if you're familiar with Dragon Age, if you're familiar with Fantasy Age, if you're familiar with Titan's Grave, you pretty much know the rules. What this does, it's a whole new book. I got it on Amazon for a little bit over $30. Let's see, what's the what's the MSRP? Uh, $34.95. And I want to get one thing out of the way right now. I'm a huge Green Ronin fan. I like all of their products. I've been a fan uh, since back in the day when they did Book of the Righteous when they were real big in the 3.0 and 3.5 and they were throwing out stuff and they had Stan doing some work for them. Uh, Hal Mangold is a layout and uh, genius. Uh, Chris Pramus and Nicole are phenomenal business owners uh, and just probably some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Uh, and I've just, I've been a fan. Uh, Chris, when he had this little known game called Mutants and Masterminds and I had reached out to him years ago and I said, hey, uh, I can't afford to go to Gen Con, but I'll run the shit out of your game if you if you buy my ticket. Not only did Chris Pramus and Nicole buy my ticket, they paid for my hotel, and they gave me... I had a huge backpack at the time, because I've been in IT for years, and all IT guys have a really nice backpack, and I've been a gamer for half my life. Uh, over half my life. I mean, think about it. I've been doing this for 30 years. I'm only 52, so that's... That's more than half my life. Um, anyway, they were like, hey, the more stuff you take, the less we have to pay to ship back home. So pack it up. And I mean, I got so much of it. And my Book of the Righteous is still on the shelf up there. I love that book. Um, I refer to it often when I'm looking for religious stuff for my, my fantasy games and even some modern and sci-fi games. But anyway, point being, great company. Really like to support them happy to do this video. I've done Fantasy Age. I've done Titan's Grave. So I wanted to do Modern Age, not only because I'm running it next weekend, uh, but also because it was time. Uh, they've got uh, they've got the GM screen out. It is basically the same thing as the Fantasy Age GM screen. So if you haven't seen my review on that, go check it out in the archive. Uh, comes with some wet dry erase uh, little cardboard inserts, inserts that you can write on and stuff to keep track of initiative and stunts. This game has a cool mechanic called stunts. I always say how I hate D6 games, and it's amazing how many D6 games I have that I like. Um, and this is one of them, the age system, which uh, you'll notice they always, they always capitalize age. 
Adventure Game Engine Age. So Dragon Adventure Game Engine, Fantasy Adventure Game Engine, Titan's Grave Adventure Game Engine. Um, modern Age is cool because it's just that. It brings this into the modern and slightly future. I'm really, really hoping they do a future age. I think there's a market for it. I think the book will sell well. Um, one of the great things about Chris Pramus, they don't do a whole lot of Kickstarters. I don't think they have the need to. I think their name sells their product just fine. And I, I think that's awesome. Uh, leave Kickstarter for the small indie businesses or the small press companies that really need the help to uh, promote their games. Uh, I don't think Green Ronin Games needs that. Um, so Modern Age, what is this? This is going to be your toolbox. There is no default world in here. There's no default setting. Um but it is a set of mechanics based on 3D6. Uh, one of your dice has to be different from the other two. It's a 3D6 system and you roll. So you will have an attribute and under that attribute you will have uh, some, some um, uh, in the word, you know, I have, Mr. Mean has so many games in his head that I just can't keep it all straight. Let me, let me get the right term. I'm running this game next week and I better have my shit together. Uh, you have your, uh, oh my God, your attributes. Um, let me get to the right page here, and we'll we'll go at it. Uh, man, I'm just discombobulated this morning. I don't have my shit together. Um, abilities. There we go. So you you'll start with a concept, the background, and you'll have you'll get your abilities. Your abilities are accuracy, communication, constitution, dexterity, uh, fighting. Uh -huh. Intelligence, perception, strength, and willpower. And off of those, and those will have a, a, an ability from uh, zero to four on average. Um, and then you'll have uh, basically skills within those. Um, and those uh, skills will be, uh, you know, running, stamina, swimming, tolerance under constitution, so to speak. Uh, uh, fighting would be brawling, flexible weapons, grappling, heavy blades. When you have those, you'll add that, whatever that modifier is, usually on average a plus two, you'll add that to that attribute, to that ability, and then you'll roll 3d6 looking for, um, to beat a target number that the GM sets. Um, super easy system. The cool part is you have the, the ability to generate stunts, stunt points. Whenever you roll doubles, no matter what dice out of the three roll doubles, you will look at whatever your stunt die is. In, in Modern Age, it's called a stunt die. In Fantasy Age, it's called a stunt die. Dragon Age, it's called a dragon die. That was a gimmick that they put. I call it a dragon die for all the games because I use the uh, Dragon Age D6 that I got out of one of the box sets. I always take it with me when I run any kind of age system, and so I know. And when the dragon head comes up, it's a 6. So you'll roll your 3D6. Whatever dice come up doubles, you'll look at your dragon die or your, your stunt die, um, and that'll be the one that is a different color from the other two dice. And whatever number is on there, that's how many stunt points you'll generate. Those stunt points, and there's a handy-dandy little cheat sheet in the book and in the GM screens that you can pass out to your players. Um, and that will tell you how many stunts you get to perform, which is the meat and potatoes of this game. It's really where it excels. You can do things like extra damage, extra actions cast a spell quicker if you're playing in a game that has spells, that kind of thing. So it's a lot of, it, it, it just adds flair, so oomph. Um, uh, the game is, uh, the character sheet is pretty clear and concise. You can go on, uh, you can just do a Google search for modern age and you'll, you'll pull up a bunch of character sheets. Um, you have your speed, which dictates initiative and as well as how you can move. You have your defense, which is basically your armor. And then you have your toughness, which is basically, uh, how hard it is, what you subtract from damage. And then you have your health points. And as, depending on the class you take or the specialization, the job that you do, you'll, you'll get X amount of hit points. And there's a formula to figure out. And it all, the book goes through how to tell you how to make a character. I'm going to scream at Green Ronin right now and say, for God's sakes, put this, put this uh, play aid sheet up on the website, please, so we can download it. I have yet to find it. I'm running a game this weekend. This sheet is uber, uber helpful. Help, helpful. I have the Dragon Age one and I have the Fantasy Age one, but this one is specific to Modern Age. Um, and I, I think they're all the same. It's just a difference of color. But still, it's uh, the quick reference card and the initiative cards are phenomenal. And it really helps you as a GM because you put these initiative cards in order and you're good to go. So anyway, that's that. Phenomenal, phenomenal game. Uh, I don't have enough great things to say about it. 
uh, you got your modern modern age, and but you say, wait, Mister Mean, there's no there's no game world, there's no setting, there's no. I mean, I, I I need help. I'm not an awesome GM like you. I can't pull stuff out of the thin air and the vapor like you do, because I do it all the time. Um, I need help. What help is there for my modern age game? Because I really want to run modern age. Well, all my meanies, Mister Mean wouldn't leave you hanging. World of Lazarus. It's out. I picked this up off of Amazon. Um, I think the full retail is... I don't have a good game store here, so that's why I buy from Amazon. And I'm also unemployed, so i got to save a buck. Uh, $34.95 as well. So what's nice is the core rule book is $34.95. The setting book is $34.95. So I read this. This is based on the comic works of... Um, Two guys, and I, I, I was reading the preface, and he did write the, the uh, preface. Greg Rucka, and it, um, he had a friend, and they both wrote this. And uh, it was a graphic novel. And it's family above all else. Or family above all. So basically, the world has hit this. It's slightly in the future, not super far in the future. Maybe uh, a couple years, 10 years at most. And uh, we've hit economic collapse. Uh, there wasn't a nuclear war. There wasn't... Uh, you know, post-apocalyptic, you know, shit's hit the fan. It's just economic collapse. I mean, we have, we've gone down the hellhole um, and basically that zero zero point or zero point zero zero one percent of the wealthy distributed all across the world decided to buy the world, basically. And so now we've gone to this feudalism society where we have serfs, uh, which are people who work for the ruling families and the world. And it's great because there's a map on the inside cover and on the back and tells you the ha ruling families. This book focuses real heavy on the Carlisle family. Um, but there, I don't know if they're going to do other source books with the other family members. Um, it doesn't kind of feel that way to me. But man, you want to talk about an in-depth for... Let's see how many actual pages we have here. Um... And uh, it's nice because on the world map down here at the bottom, they have all the family logos, which is really cool. So if you got the PDF of this, easy enough to break those up and print them out and stuff like that. Um, we are looking at 128 pages, roughly. That includes the character sheets and an ad for The Expanse, which is my next game. Because there's your sci-fi version. I forgot. <laughs> the Expanse. Uh, which you now It's set in a very specific world, but it's sci-fi. You could totally use it. So I need to pick that one up because The Expanse is next on my list. I would love to, to uh, get The Expanse. But anyway, back to this. A dystopian near future setting for modern age. So this is, this is your world in a can right here, kids. This is everything you need to run. Uh, there's a little bit of tech in here. There's a little bit of armor. There's uh, some new uh, career packages. You make your character according to this. And then you can choose careers. You can choose careers out of here, but you can also choose careers out of here. And basically, uh, the best you can kind of hope for is to be a serf and to work for one of these ruling families, um, like in, in essence, the Carlisles. And uh, you do jobs for them. Uh, serfs basically are almost like a guaranteed citizenship for the most part. They, they have food. They have a roof over their head. It's, it's basically... Uh, take Shadowrun, uh, the world of Shadowrun, and knock out all the magic and the fantasy, and just that's what you're left with is this dystopian uh, mega corporations. But instead of corporations, it's families, and those families own all the corporations. So they're taking it one step further. There's a, a list of all the NPCs in the back, um, very comprehensive index, as well as a table of contents. Uh, every family uh, breaks up, and a lot of them is taken off by the. Uh, by the uh, like like the, the the country's flag and then the family w weaves in their motif so to speak so it's really cool um, and they, they go over a list of the families and the predominant holdings in that area and you know what they're in like here's America um, the, you know all, all your fun stuff there a little bit of Canada um, and it, it's just 
uh, oh, there's some spec ops guys, obviously some family, you know, serfs, warriors, because everybody has a standing army. We, the, the tone I got from this is we're still on the brink of world war. Uh, it's just, it's very covert, and nobody wants to launch nukes because the world's already fucked. 90% or 99% of the populace lives in poverty. Um, I mean, it literally doesn't have enough uh, food. Uh, my beard is all over the place, guys. I apologize. It's just crazy. I'm trying to tame this thing. Um, a lot of poverty, uh, and everybody's struggling to stretch a, a penny into a dollar. It's that bad. And um, you want to work for one of these families. You want to become a serf because what happens is if you take a position, nine out of ten times you get to bring your family with you because the logic is, yeah, we can just take you, but you're going to be distracted with worrying about your family so you can bring your immediate family with you for the most part. And, and you can have you know a, a place to live. It, it won't be the most fantastic place, but you'll, you'll have a roof over your head and you'll have food in your belly, and you'll have a job, and then your family members can hopefully get jobs as well. So that's all fine and dandy if you're a serf and or you're the 001% you know, aligned with working directly for the families, which is better than being a serf. Um, but then there's the waste, and that is where the general populace falls. And these are the people that don't have running water, don't have grocery stores, don't have an education system. They are literally vagabonds and homeless people everywhere and they are just struggling to survive um and the and the book goes into great detail in describing basically just how desolate it is so when you make your character you can come from a waste background which i think is kind of cool and then you can you can make your way up to being a serf or working directly for the families so I haven't dug too deep into it, but I was glad to pick it up. I saw it uh, for a de I think it was I think it was right at thirty dollars. I bought it thirty one dollars on Amazon with free shipping, so I got it. Uh, very happy with it. Um, really, really enjoying it. Uh, gonna delve some more into it this week. I'm not gonna run this at the convention uh, just because I don't know enough about it. I don't have enough time to prep. I'm just going to run an off-the-cuff. It's basically just a, a demo game uh, set in modern age, and we're going to use the stunts and everything. I've got a concept in mind. I'm not going to spout it out here just in case somebody's going to the convention. I don't want to ruin it for anybody, uh, but definitely going to be fun. But I'm looking forward to delving more into this, and I think I'm going to try to pick up the Expanse RPG. I'm going to check Amazon and see if they've got it first. I'm not even sure if it's out. I think it was a Expanse was a Kickstarter, if I if I remember correctly, and uh, I, it was successful. I know that much. I, I knew I couldn't back it. I was in the midst of moving from Texas to Minnesota, so I, I didn't have the money to uh, to do that. But modern age. Uh, what else can I say about this? Uh, we've talked about the stunt system. The mechanics, the base mechanics, uh, there's um, basic weapons in here. There's no laser weapons or anything like that because, remember, this is modern. It's not sci-fi. Um, I'm going to see if there's if I can get to the equipment section real quick. Equipment, uh, page 7, 70. So let's go to page 70. Book is laid out really well. Really good index. Really good table of contents. Um, weapon details, you know, talks about unarmed. Uh, yeah, so we've got basically your unarmed attacks, your hand-to-hand -hand weapons. We have everything from an axe to a uh, heavy chain. You know, you swing around some heavy chain if you get the strength. Firearms, we go from a blunderbuss uh, and to an SMG. Other ranged weapons are compound and longbows and uh, incendiary weapons, blast weapons, black powder. So kind of we cover the gambit, but all pretty much modern-day weapons. Assault rifles, grenades, thrown um, there's no, like in fantasy age, there was the warrior, the mage and the, uh, the thief, um, or rogue. I don't remember what they called it in fantasy age. They, they don't have that here. Well, here, what you have is, uh, you have a career. Um, so you have your abilities. Uh, let's see it's right here. I love this because every one of the age books gives you the character creation in X amount of steps. And on average, it's nine steps. Um, profession. You select a profession that defines what your character does now or did just before the first adventure, which gives you additional skills the character can perform. 
Your drive decides what inspires your character to take risk, get involved in the games of storyline, and take the various actions that they do. So that's the main thing. You need a concept. Uh, you get resources and equipment. You figure out your health, defense, toughness, and speed. You figure out what your goals, your ties, and your relationships are to the other characters and in the game in general. Now, for a convention game, I'm going to pre-do all that. Um, I've, I've got a form-fillable PDF character sheet, and I'm going to start work probably tomorrow, uh, since I'll have some a, a little more free time tomorrow. I'm going to set all this up, and Wednesday, I have to have this all done by Friday, because Friday is a four-hour drive to Austin, Minnesota, and then the Spam Museum, I think when we get there, and then I'm at the convention Saturday and Sunday, Sunday night, I'm driving back home. So, I don't have a whole lot of time to work on characters, basically this week, and I have to do the Simba Room characters. Luckily, I reached out to the MeWe Pop, my friends on MeWe, onto the Simba Room uh, MeWe page, and uh, one of the guys there has a bunch of the pre-gens that he ported over to an actual character sheet. Um, reason being, if uh, and we're going to go off on a little tangent here, the Simba Room characters, when you download them, they look like this. And while that is great, it's not very good for players because it, it doesn't tell the player anything. You don't, you know, if you've never played Simba Room, you you don't know what quick, resolute, strong, or vigilant is. You don't know any of that stuff, so you're, you're trying to figure everything out. I'm going to see if I can get that to focus. It's not going to focus that well. Anyway, that's uh, basically a character in the pregens that you can download off of Simba Room's free Lego website, um, and, and you, can, uh, you can print these out. But this gentleman, uh, his name, I believe, is JT, um, on the Simba Room MeWe group, he went in and he plugged all that information into a character sheet, and he's going to send it to me hopefully tonight when he gets home. So, thank you very much to you, good sir. Uh, you are a scholar and a gentleman. And then, um, um, sorry, an old Warhammer note. Just, fell. I got shit everywhere, guys. Um, so, and then with the modern age, I'm going to have to make the modern age characters from scratch. I did download the quick start, and there are some characters in there. Uh, and I'm probably going to bastardize that quick start and use it a little bit because I really like the quick start. In fact, I have to remind myself to print that. Um, and then it has the pre-generated characters there and they're all spelled out. So I'm going to definitely try to use those pre-gens or I'm going to make one or two of my own because I think I signed up to run between four and six players and I think the pre-gen only has four or five uh, in the quick start. And so I'm going to need to make at least one or two more characters. But very easy, uh, simple character creation. It's just basically the only die rolling involved is choosing a little bit of your background, your backstory, uh, and then choosing uh, your doing your stats. You roll the dice, and they have almost like D and D, where uh, whatever you rolled on your three d six equates to this bonus. They do the same thing in uh, fan, uh, Modern Age. So um, we have babbled on for about thirty minutes. Um, talked about the con um, help support it if you can if you can go buy a t-shirt tell them mr mean sent you that'd be great or a ball cap if you're a hat wearer like me uh i'm gonna pick up my t-shirt there at the convention hopefully uh i'm hoping they'll have some left uh they're gonna have a, a charity auction all of the money that's raised at the charity auction goes to uh the autism uh foundation that they support which i think is super awesome my little brother is autistic and uh, he's doing well and it's because of organizations and charities such as ostacon that he's able to do so well so it's kind of near and dear to my heart um uh modern age guys have you played it do you like it do you not like it uh i love the layout of the book I, it's crisp it's clear everything's pretty straightforward um I don't really have any complaints, except I wish they would get those uh, ancillary uh, character reference cards up so that people could download them, the uh, initiative tracker and the uh, the cards. Uh, when you buy the GM screen, you get an initiative tracker and, and, a, and a dry erase marker, uh, but I, I don't want to necessarily lug all of that to the con, although I am, I think. But I want those sheets so I can download them. And they may be available. I just haven't looked hard enough. But they're not on the... As far as I can tell, they aren't on the Green Ronin website. Uh, but I'll have to double check. But anyway, guys, uh, I just wanted to pop out a quick video. Uh, like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Support the channel if you can. Hit me up on MeWe uh, or Discord. Love to chat with you. 
I am currently on Tuesday nights at 7.30 Central Standard Time. I am running Esper Genesis by uh, Alligator Alley. Uh, it's a D&D uh, sci-fi variant. Love it much. I'm actually also prepping to run a Simba Room one or two shot. Unfortunately, we had some delays uh, last week and we weren't able to run. So I'm hoping we'll be able to run this week. Although with me prepping for the convention, I may not be able to run just because I'm just not enough hours in the day. So anyway, that might be for next week after it slows down. And then, of course, we're coming into the summer. Mr. Mean is going to try to make it to some conventions and stuff like that. So as always, guys, I love you guys. Thank you so much for all your support. I get a lot of positive feedback. Um, I know it's just me sitting in front of a camera babbling for, on average, 30, 40 minutes. But most of you seem to like it. Uh, I like doing it. Um, if there's a game you want to see reviewed, or if you're a small press publisher and you want me to review your game, send me a copy. Uh, you can always reach me at J, the letter J, P-O-L-A-C-K, at gmail.com. And... Uh, I'll, you know, I can send you my address, or if you want to send me a PDF, I'd be more than happy to review your game. I've got a couple of things in the queue coming up, uh, but I'm going to wait and work on that stuff after the convention. Uh, hopefully, I have an interview this week. I'm looking forward to that, and I'd love to get back to work and get some money on the table and help support my family. Um, but other than that, things are trucking along, and I'm enjoying my videos. I'm enjoying chatting with you guys so leave your comments down below i will make do my best to answer them or at least acknowledge them and uh let me know what you think about modern age if you had a chance to play it what you like about it what you dislike about it what you hope to see and let me know about the expanse if you bought the expanse is it worth buying should i get it should i do a review let me know guys all right guys as always peace love and hair grease and remember as always mr mean says be nice